didn't arrive until the 17th century, and before then, the day began with a mug of beer or ale. Tea. It was very much a high society kind of beverage. To own a teapot, particularly a silver teapot, was really a status symbol. And it was a good investment. It could be readily changed into cash, but it was also a family heirloom to be passed down. In an 18th century colonial household, tea would have been served in the afternoon. The wife or the daughter of the family would serve tea, and on the tea table would be a teapot and uh, porcelain cups and saucers. Friends and family would be invited. And it was very much a, a social event. Supplies. Yeah. The power of your teapot at the Metropolitan Museum was made in 1796, and it is in the neoclassical style that was very much in vogue after the Revolutionary War. It is oval in shape, and it is fluted. And it was really very labor-intensive. It was a hammer man's job. Steve Smithers is a silversmith who is devoted to carrying on the craft of the colonial silversmith. It's very challenging, very time-consuming, but very satisfying and important, it seems to me, to help carry on the lost art. In the Revere teapot, we have these concave flutes created by hammering into a special shaped form. The fluting emulates the fluting on a classical column, the in and out surface. The designs of the post-revolution of the new country reflected our admiration and our desire to emulate the ideals and the architecture and design of the earlier Greek democracy. As the country grew and people moved westward, silversmiths found work in other areas of the country. The silver tea service made by Thomas William Brown in Wilmington, North Carolina in the 1840s is a wonderful example of what happened to American design. It's actually fairly French in taste. It was made with some efficiency, such as the cast finials and feet. Well, we have various finials and feet here. Once the casting is done, you have kind of a rough surface which needs to be cleaned up. Mainly it was technology that changed the world of the silversmith. After the Civil War, we begin to see more and more production of silver. We see many silver manufactories taking off. There you have it. The diamond dinette set, as it's called, is very much in the Art Deco, modern style that became popular in the 20th century. And the efficiency of it, I think, is very appealing, the way all three pieces fit into the little tray. It looks somewhere between an ocean liner and a skyline. And it, it very much speaks to the taste of the times. You know, the the manual the labor, so. Silver has gone out of fashion. I think the American bride no longer registers for silver. People don't want to have to take care of it. But I hope one day we'll all remember that it's something that we can use that brings beauty to our lives, to our tables. And it, it is so much a part of our history that it's uh, something that I would like to see brought back into vogue. Thank you.